I'm Maddie. What's up guys, I'm Chase. And today we're gonna, I don't even know what this video is about. <laughs> today we're gonna be talking to you about how to get into medical school with a lower GPA and or MCAT score. Before we get into it, please, please, please like and subscribe to our channel because it really supports us. And then also leave a comment down below and tell us what other videos you wanna see because I can promise you that we will definitely make it. Um, and maybe even give you a shout out. So just before we get started, just breathe. I promise it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be all right, no matter what. Um, so we'll just reveal what our scores were. I had a 384 GPA and scored a 504 on my MCAT. And my GPA was a 3.67 and I also got a 504 on my MCAT. Now we do realize that these are not by any means awful MCATs or GPAs. Um, however, we worked really hard on our MCAT and it was disappointing um, to see what our score was after we'd worked so hard and I'm sure a lot of you guys are in the same boat. Additionally, medicals like to, medical schools like to see an upward trend in your grades if you're not consistently high like Chase over here. So my freshman year I had to retake Chem 123 because I was failing. And then my junior or my sophomore year when I took organic chemistry, I got a C in OCHEM 1 and a B minus in OCHEM 2. So my grades greatly improved from then and um, in my upper bios and biochem, I did significantly better, which is what they like to see. Right, and rolling off what she just said, the upper level classes that you take in your junior year are normally like the most looked at your biochems, physiology, physios, anatomy, like those, those kind of courses. I mean, that's more relevant towards the medical school. So if you do well on those, it shows that you can handle the rigor that medical school has. So now getting into like what you can do besides, you know, your grades <laughs> or your numbers. So be an active leader in an organization. Don't just be a member, like try to get on the executive board. I don't know how much more I can say about that. Just yeah. Don't stress about being involved in a million different clubs. Yeah. Um, if that's who you are, feel free, but just make sure that you're really being a leader in the few clubs that you are involved in or super interested in. Right. And then your quality of the letters of recommendations that you're going to receive. We'll make another video on that. Um, it'll be linked up top right now that shows how you can get the right letters of rec and who you should get a letter of recommendation from but those are worth a lot and they're more objective so it can show who you are as a person. Mm -hmm. um, also, what so medical school is a lot about mentorship and that's how it is basically for the rest of your career. So we get mentored right now by the upper class, same with residency and then same when you're in attending. And so they wanna see that you enjoy mentoring people and are able to be mentored. So making sure that you're in an activity that you can do that in. So Chase and I were both teachers. He was um, an SI leader, supplemental instructor, and I was a tutor. And so there was really a hierarchy and you could kind of like move on to the next step and then lead those below you and then move on to the next step again and lead those below you again. Um, so that's just really important. They wanna see that you are able to do that. Right, um, another thing that we know we have stressed at least three times, we have three videos on this, is the personal statement. Like I think, and I know Maddie thinks as well, that the personal statement is the most important factor of your application. Um, most medical schools weigh the personal statement to the same level that they weigh the GPA and the MCAT, and many medical schools weigh it more than those, those numbers. Um, yeah. It's the most important thing you have. And it's the thing that I feel like you have the most control on because it's literally your writing. Yeah, you're literally talking to the medical school, telling them exactly what you want them to know about you. So definitely check out those videos. Um, there's three of them. Yeah. One more thing that we think you can do is shadowing. You can shadow as many different physicians that you want. And, and you should. You should. And other healthcare providers. Which you should also do. So that shows your interest in it. That's another thing that doesn't involve your grades. So you want to build your application as wide reaching as possible and shadowing is a good portion that a lot of people don't take a lot of advantage of. And I think I was asked that on almost all of my interviews. Yeah, I, I will talk about this in another video again, but Chase only shadowed a handful of doctors, whereas I shadowed a much wider breadth and they really seemed to like that, especially in my application because I could speak to all the different doctors as well as all the different professions that I had shadowed, which they liked to see because they love to ask, why medicine? Like, why be a physician? Why not a PA? Why not a nurse anesthetist? 
and I had shadowed a lot of other professions and I could say, well, because X, Y, Z, because I had done it. And then I think the final note that is the easiest thing to do by far is applying the day the application opens. If your application is the first on the list, they're going to like you a lot better than if your application is in the middle or one at the end. So apply the day the application opens. I, that's simple and will increase your chances of getting accepted, you know, two or three fold. So if you like videos like these or if you want any more information, please comment down below or comment any videos that you would like to see. Um, again, like and subscribe to our channel because it really supports us and we will see you next time. Thanks.